Or are there any any kind of types of like these types of games where you enjoy the grinding more than others? Um, hmm. As long as it's not Final Fantasy Two <laughs> grinding, <laughs> I, I I I don't mind grinding. Like I usually actually enjoy it a little bit, especially nowadays since. Usually I can like just mindlessly do it while editing. Like, yeah. You know, have my attention sort of focused on the editing while my hands just go on auto. <laughs> yeah, for me it depends on the game. I uh, I mm -hmm. sometimes I'm in the mood for just turning off my brain and powering up my character. Yeah. Uh I guess it, it works for me in games like Dragon Quest, uh, but like I really don't like grinding in games like Pokemon. Yeah, I was just gonna very, say very similar. I was just yeah. gonna say that too, because like for me, first of all, I have the problem where even though I'm not, I am gonna hate it and it'll make me quit. I'm like, all right, we gotta catch every Pokemon, <laughs> and then yeah. and then like I'm also like, okay, but we gotta treat them all evenly. But I also, from the Pokemons that I have played, the story just isn't enough of a reward for me. Like, grinding, yeah. one thing, like, I always see grinding as sort of, like, the work you put in to get in, to in turn be gifted with story. And, yeah. you know, Pokemon doesn't really have a great story. It's like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to play Pokemon, you're usually playing it for the sake of the gameplay and not the uh, <laughs> story. For collecting the monsters, man. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I was actually just talking about this with Binks earlier too, <laughs> and I told her about the Nuzlocke challenge, which she was horrified by. Because <laughs> <laughs> I described it as like, well, essentially, uh, your your Pokemon die, and then you have to lock them up in the box forever. <laughs> Seal them to a fate of eternal darkness. <laughs> well, I mean, it, that's that's if you're like softballing. It usually, uh, you have to release them. Like you don't you can't don't even get to store them. You have to release them. What's the difference? The, what difference is that if you put them in a box, you still have the option of getting them back if you want to like cheese it. But here it's like no, you got to dedicate yourself and release them. Like you can't even. You don't even have the option of going back and put taking them out of the box. Hmm. In case your discipline wavers and and you're like, no, I, I want I want to get the back. That was not well, that wasn't fair. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go pick up some bottle rockets while you're. Uh... Okay. In a grindy mood, you can uh, get some pretty good damage uh, items for yeet. Yeah, like in most Final Fantasies, I enjoy the grinding. Most RPGs. Yeah. FF2 was just... For those of you who do not know, Final Fantasy 2 is considered the black sheep of the series because they tried something unique in which instead of levels, uh, you raised stats specifically, and you did that by using the the stat and skills. So, for example, if you wanted a character to be better at swords, then you had them use swords a lot. If you wanted a character to have a lot of HP, 
then in a single battle they had to drop below half their HP. Uh, if you wanted them to use magic, then you had them, you know, you had to raise their intelligence, have them use magic all the time. But what made it even harder was that in raising some stats, you decreased others. So you wanted to be oh, very careful God. of not like fucking them up. And it was made even harder then because as I mentioned, you had to like get them below a certain amount of HP to raise their HP. But ends also scare scaled with how little HP and MP you had. So if you fucked them up too much, then you risk the chance of not being able to afford healing them up at the end. <laughs> so it was a very careful balancing act that you had to pull there. Yikes. That sounds pretty rough. Yeah. But you know what? I I respect it for trying something new. And it's an interesting yeah. concept. Just didn't quite work out in execution. I mean, yeah, it's it's a really really cool concept that other RPGs have also, you know, yeah, <clears throat> since tried done. and and have have done uh, to a more or less successful degree. Like just look at RuneScape. That's like <laughs> yeah. Essentially, what what you do in RuneScape is just level up a bunch of different individual stats, or or a game like Kenshi, where or EverQuest. Yeah. You were gonna say Kenshi? Yeah, I don't know. Have you heard about the game Kenshi? Mm mm. It's this really really big open world RPG where it, it's kind of like sand, very very sandboxy, and. And you start at, you can start out with you know with a bunch of different modifiers, but it's like a huge, huge, like expansive world with a bunch of different factions and and you're just like a nobody and and you have to sort of make your your way and make your your place in that world. And you it's it's like everything will will kill you essentially until you've managed to <laughs> grind up certain skills. Until you kill and... them all. And then you can kill the everybody, or like, <laughs> like. Is it single player or um, or what? It's single player, yeah. Okay. And, and like, there the grinding you have to do is pretty insane, like from what I've seen with like people playing it. What's it for? And like the way it's for PC. Okay. The way you like level up your um, like your HP or like your your toughness is literally you have to get the shit beaten out of you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, yep. Like over and over again, uh, to the point where actually like, getting enslaved, like committing a crime, then getting arrested and, and turned into a slave, is one of the best ways to level up a bunch of stuff. <laughs> oh God. Because because like you can try to like escape from the um, the slavers and they'll beat you up, but then they'll heal you and feed you because you know they want to keep you alive. And you can keep doing that over and over until you essentially <laughs> become unkillable. And one day you can just be like, Nah, I want to leave now. And they can't stop you. Nice. Is this a recent game or? Uh, it's. Let me see. <coughs> Twenty thirteen was the original release. Okay. Wow. But it's uh, it's had a lot of updates and it's like a lot of mods exist for it. It's it's there's a big community uh, for the game, and they're working on a second game now. Uh, and but they're you know planning on putting it in the Unreal Engine, which is probably gonna make it run a little bit better than the first one does, because <laughs> there's a lot of shit to load. Like I've seen people play it and like the, the there's a lot that the game has to load and it's not a very well optimized game in that regard in terms of like loading times even for people who have like it, like industry standard S uh, like SSDs it's quite the game yeah But I'm really intrigued by it. Oh, 
Also, just like it's it's this post-apocalyptic world that has a lot of lore to it and a bunch of different like political intrigues. Hmm. And <laughs> also like the the guy I watch who plays it, um, Tomato Gaming. Like I'm watching some of his old vods of it. And and the way he talks about certain places, he, like looking over the map, like yeah, we don't go there. We also we definitely <laughs> don't go there, and <laughs> and we'd never go there ever again. Okay, <laughs> just like, like like you know poking at the map, and he doesn't really explain what happened or like what it is, but just that they no no that's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what other games do systems like that. I mean, like Oblivion. Oh yeah, yeah. The Elder Scrolls, I guess, do stuff like that. But Oblivion, Morrowind, and Oblivion more so than Skyrim, for yeah. example. But yeah, you just. Well, I guess Valheim also. Yeah. I like being able to just, like, jump a bunch in Oblivion until I can just, like, jump onto a rooftop. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I mean, Oblivion is kind of a rough game in terms of, like, this, the level scaling. Where eventually, like, enemies just become damage sponges. So no matter how strong you are, like, even if you've, like, really powered yourself up... Like it's you just have to keep holding down left button, just ching 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 <laughs> on an enemy, and it kind of just feels, I don't know, unsatisfying. Like there's not really any oomph to what you do. Yeah. You're just like you could just continue to hit someone until eventually they ragdoll. <laughs> But talking of um, earlier about black sheeps of like video games, it's I think it's also funny with like how Final Fantasy two is the black sheep and also how Zelda two is the black sheep, <laughs> and they both tr like you know try different systems, and and in Zelda two, you know they they introduced the fact that you can level up and like adding add an experience to the game, which I think is pretty interesting. And then never came back. Never came back. They never did anything in, like like Zelda 2 in that franchise ever again. Even though that would I think that would be cool, like a like a 2D side scrolling Zelda game. If if they did it right. I feel like there there's plenty of potential with that. Is there? Isn't there? What could they do in Zelda that they haven't done in a bunch of other pro uh, platformers? I mean, maybe maybe it could just take place in the universe, but then it, they change up the formula, so it's not a Zelda game, but in 2D, but it's... Um, I don't know, it, it's a... a 2D platformer that takes place in the Legend of Zelda universe. Yeah. But I'm sure they probably just want to stick to to what they know, and all their 2D side-scrollers are mainly Mario and Metroid. But then, you know, it's not really a whole lot of Metroid these days. <laughs> but at least they're working on Prime 4. What'd you say? I said Kirby. Well, Kirby, Kirby too, yeah. Gonna say Smash Brothers. 
Uh, I remember uh, playing Kirby's uh, Dreamland on the Game Boy. And that was like my introduction to Kirby. But then once I played Smash Brothers Melee and I saw that like, you know, Kirby could suck someone up and then absorb their powers. I was like, what? Kirby never did that. <laughs> because in, in Dreamland, he does he can't like absorb powers. He just like he can suck in enemies and then shoot them back out. Is that the original Kirby game for the NES? Mm, I mean, this was on the Game Boy. It's probably a probably a port. Of yeah. I thought I killed you already. <laughs> All right, ye, I'll heal you. I didn't realize they used items on their own. Hmm. Wait, what? Because I was on auto. And, uh, -huh. uh yeah. feet used an herb. Hold on. Kirby Streamland is the first game of the Kirby series and the debut of Kirby. Oh. So it was not on the NES first. Wacky! <laughs> trying to see here. Okay, so in 1993, Kirby's Adventure was released in North America, and that is when he got the ability to gain certain powers when he ate uh, certain enemies. And that was on the NES. Okay, Ray's brain. Uh, where should we go for here for the from here for the capsules? Uh, I believe to the left. And then the first downward uh, ladder. Yes, heat is becoming stronger. Feet so proud. <laughs> I mean, you know, Yeet will never be as strong as PP was, but you know, <laughs> he can he can dream. Oh, I miss Pippi. Yeah, Pippi was uh, she was a uh, goddess <laughs> of, of war and destruction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, old robot, a robot's description is hypnotism does not work on this robot. <laughs> huh. That's pretty strange. 69. Nice. Alright. Death by Left. 69. <laughs> Left or right? Uh, right. How many Dr. Distortos are there? Too many. It's a whole family of them. <laughs> they all went to medical school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, they both <laughs> ran. <laughs> oh lord. Oh wait, which door? This first one? That's uh, gonna be some life up cream. Meh. Is there only the one president here? Oh, 
Oh, okay. The room was longer. Uh, present, are you okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the int cap? Should I give it to ye or just give it to feet? Let me... I gotta check out game mechanics. Wisdom increases the chance of hitting with status ailments, both in the form of Psy and items like the Flash Dark. So I don't know how much uh, Yeet is going to be using status ailment um, items, so maybe just give it to Feet. Okay. Uh, um, are you okay there, buddy? Uh, if 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 you need someone to talk to, I'm here. <laughs> Back up the ladder, then. Yeah. Why well, are you sure are injecting a lot of shit into yourself? <laughs> I guess that's why you're that strong. <laughs> Does your parents know? <laughs> so, from this point, you want to go to the right. And then... Just start... Uh... Keep going. And then you just start Duh. going up to, like, all the ladders. Farmer's pretty cute. Super cute and super dead. <laughs> now this place is big. You ain't even seen. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, Lord, my brain has just remembered it, too. <laughs> hmm? The, uh, what, what, what this place looks like. <laughs> He has seen the map. Oh. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Up this one? Yeah, just keep going up ladders. Hello, I'm here to blow you up. Oh. Oh no, I died. I was blown up instead. No. Well, you know, now that you know what it's like, you you know how how to inflict it better. Oh yay! Wow, there are so many running fireballs in this place. <laughs> it's a safety hazard.
Dr. Distorto destroyed. <laughs> Distorted I'll destroy even the entire family. <laughs> your family your family tree is toast, mister. <laughs> I'm digging up the roots. God damn. Ugh. <laughs> what? Just. I'm so glad we're s <laughs> just getting the important stuff here. Yeah. yeah. What was everything else? Just like magic herbs and healing items? Yeah, basically. Oof. Uh, he's getting pretty low on. There's dungeon crawls and then there's dungeon slogs. So, I guess this will take one out and use it on Yeet? Or maybe it'll give it to him. That's... No. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good enough. This is, it kind of looks like a melted Pac-Man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> help! Help! And up and to the right is going to be a force capsule. Nice. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Bomber, please leave. Please recognize personal boundaries. Yes. Oh my lord. Oh my god. Bomber, <laughs> Bomber. please! Bomber! Bomber? What did bomber. we just say? We've talked about this bomber. Haha! <laughs> Haha! <laughs> What's personal space? In here? This looks boss. Your boss ish. Nope. It's capsule ish. Mm -hmm. Box ish. What was the force did? Uh, it's for upping your PP. Ah. So definitely only a feet item. <laughs> yeah. Do <laughs> do The end is in sight. <laughs> so I know that thing like in the middle of its chest is like just supposed to be a meter, but it looks like eyes also. <laughs> it does, yeah.
through this door? Perhaps. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> There's another door further. Okay. Oh shit. I am on I am on the rock! Okay! One, two, three, fire! All of this just to blow up that stupid boulder. <laughs> uh, we did it! Alright. That was all worth it! <laughs> Well then, uh, that will be it for this stream. Thank you everyone for joining us. In a little bit, I'll be starting Hades, so stick around. Heck yeah. <laughs> Take care, everyone.